Voicebox is a Tiki Toby fanfiction consisting of 12 chapters and was first published on Quotev on the 29th of March 2014. Obviously, all signs point towards it being a magnum opus, so therefore I thought I would read the story together with you all so we can dull the pain together. Each week, every Tuesday, I'll upload a new chapter. Let's call it Tiki Tuesdays. Now, it begins. Voice Box, a Tiki Toby love story. Chapter 2 It was midnight when I finally entered my house. My parents had gone to bed three hours ago, and since they are heavy sleepers, I knew I didn't have to worry about them waking up anytime soon. I snuck up the stairs, being careful to avoid the loose board on the fourth step, and slipped into my parents' bedroom. They looked so peaceful sleeping there, as if they didn't have a care in the world. Rage filled my mind as all the abuse they had inflicted on me over the last seven years fills my mind. Shayla, it will be alright. We will never have to worry about them again. Kill them now, we have to protect Benna. I know, voice box. If I leave them alive, they will just hurt Benna. They deserve to die a slow, painful death, but we don't have the time for that. I tightened my grip on the Skinners and felt my mouth stretch into a smile. I walked over to the bed and slowly crawled up the bed until I was directly between my parents. I raised both Skinners up over my head and slammed them both down at the same time into my parents' heads. Rage had given me more strength than I thought, and the Skinners sunk into their heads all the way to the handles. I giggled that sinister giggle again as I wrenched the Skinners out of their skulls. The blood started to flow out of the puncture wound in their heads. I then tore out their vocal cords with my bare hands and ate them. Oh, how I love the taste. Once I finished my treat, I went and took a quick shower since the killing had been so silent I didn't need to worry about leaving quickly. I loved the feel of the warm water caressing my skin. I felt something wet and furry brush against my calves and quickly looked over to my shoulder to see what it was. Oh no. I felt my eyes widen and my mouth dropped open when I saw that I now had a very beautiful red tail. <laughs> I concentrated on moving it and it moved. I ran my hands through the fur and shivered in pleasure as I stroked my new tail. I noticed that the tip of my tail was black. It looked like a fox tail. I felt my ears twitch, but they were no longer on the sides of my head. I reached up and found large furry ears on top of my head. I would have screamed, but I knew I couldn't draw attention to the house or I would be in deep trouble. I quickly turned the water off and wrung the water out of my hair, which I now noticed was blood red and out of my tail. I had to see what I looked like. I stepped out of the shower, dried off and used the towel to wipe the steam off the mirror. I was shocked when I saw my new looks. I had two red fox ears with black tips on top of my head, a healed scar on my right cheek from when Joel had cut me, but the most striking difference was my left eye. Instead of the brilliant emerald green I had since birth, it was black with a slitted blood red purple and there was black oozing from it, like I was crying black tears. The way it was slitted reminded me of a cat's eye. I tilted my head and smiled a big toothy grin and noticed that my canine teeth were longer and sharper than they had been. I loved this new look. I looked at the blood-stained hoodie and jean I had been wearing and thought that I should have a new outfit to match my new looks. I went back to my parents' room and raided mother's closet. Most of her clothes were business outfits, but in the very back I noticed an outfit that was just right for my new looks. It was a long-sleeved, very short leather top and a very short leather skirt. 
The sleeves of the top were black with red stripes. The rest was a sky blue color that matched the skirt. I grabbed the outfit and some black leather boots and headed to my room to get dressed. I tossed on a black lacy thong, <laughs> the outfit and the boots, which came up to mid-thigh and stood in front of the full-length mirror in my room. The leather shirt covered most of my breasts and acted like a bra, but left the underside of my breasts exposed. Another thing I noticed was that the bruises from all those beating had disappeared. We look great, Shayla. Now we should take all the money our parents have, pack a bag for Benna, get Benna to our grandparents' house, and get out of here. You might also want to add a black leather belt so when we get the sheets for the Skinners from Roxanne, we can have easy access to them. Great idea, voice box. I think I saw one in Mother's room. After I packed some of my clothes and essentials in my teal backpack, tucked the Skinners in the side pockets and went to the kitchen. I raided the pantry for all the non-perishable food I could find, some silverware and dishes and a can opener, and stuffed it all in my backpack. Then I ran back to my parents' room, grabbed the belt, put it on, and raided my parents' wallets and the small lockbox, and headed to Bella's room. I grabbed her purple duffel bag and threw in a bunch of clothes and her favorite toys. Then I picked her up, making sure that her blanket was wrapped tightly around her and headed out of the house. In this case I was happy that it was difficult to wake Ben up. It was about 3 in the morning when I headed out for our grandparents' house, so the streets were empty. Ben asleep through the whole 3 hour walk. It was just before 6 in the morning when I laid Benna on the porch swing, put her duffel bag in front of the door, rang the doorbell and hid in the nearby bushes. It took Grandpapa a few minutes to answer the door, and he looked puzzled at first, until he saw the duffel bag. I saw him look around and notice Benna. As soon as he picked her up and went inside, I took off into the woods. I decided to stay in the old fort Rebecca and I had made just before she died. It wasn't too far from my house, and I needed some sleep before I head back out to deal with Roxanne and Jeannie. It was already dark by the time I woke up. I checked my watch and saw it was already 8pm, so after eating a couple of Pop-Tarts and grabbing my Skinners, I headed over to Roxanne's house. Voicebox and I talked during the hour it took to reach our destination. We planned to head out of town as soon as I finished killing those stupid girls. We hadn't decided where exactly we would go, but we both thought it was best to get as far away from here as we could, seeing how by then we will have killed six or more people, depending if I had to kill the girls' as parents. When I reached Roxanne's, the place was empty, but after a little searching I found out that her parents were out of town on a business trip, and she was staying at Jeannie's. I grinned at this because Jeannie lived outside of town. Her nearest neighbor was three miles away and her house was close to the woods, making for a fast getaway. I searched Roxanne's room and found the sheets from my Skinners and attached them to my belt. Then I headed back to the fort for my backpack since I would be able to kill them both tonight. I would just head out right from Jeannie's house, and I could even take a shower before leaving. I started twitching and giggling as I hiked to Jeannie's. By the time I reached Jeannie's, I had myself under control again. It was now about 11, and the house was dark and silent. Shayla, kill her parents first. Then we can have some fun with those two before we kill them. Great idea. I'll see what I can find to tie them up with in their parents' room. I'll have to be very quick and quiet while tying them up. I checked the back door of the house and found that the idiots hadn't even locked it. Slowly and quietly, I snuck up the stairs and peeked in the rooms. I found her parents' room and crawled to the end of their bed. This kill was almost too easy. Jeannie's mom had her head resting on her husband's chest. I quickly stabbed the Skinners into their skulls, killing them before they even had a chance to open their eyes. I quickly cut out their vocal cords and ate them while I searched their room for belts or scarves to tie Jeannie and Roxanne up with. I was in luck. Jeannie's dad had a lot of belts. I grabbed eight of them and snuck into Jeannie's room. 
Both girls were fast asleep on Jeannie's bed. I carefully tied them up with the belts, first by slowly and carefully stretching their arms up and tying them to the bars of the headboard. I was careful to spread them far enough apart that they wouldn't be able to untie themselves. I did the same with their ankles and the bars of the footboard. Once they were safely secured, I started giggling sinisterly. They both woke up with a start and tried to sit up only to find out they couldn't. The fear and panic on their faces made me grin revealing my sharp canines. They both started yelling for Genius's parents and demanding that I release them. Did you really think that we wouldn't have taken care of your parents before we came for our revenge? I chuckled as I drew the Skinners out of their sheets. Shayla! What? How? Why? Roxanne stuttered. Let us go, you skanky bitch! Jeannie yelled, because of course that's gonna help you. I don't think so, Jeannie. After all, I thought you might like to be reunited with your boyfriends and parents. It's just too bad that Roxanne's parents couldn't join the party. But I'll make sure they join you soon enough. Before they had time to say anything else, I cut their cheeks, just like Joel had got mine. I felt my tail swishing back and forth with glee as I started leaving shallow cuts all over the girls. I grinned as their screams of agony and fear serenaded me. It was music to my ears, to hear them suffer just as I had. After a few hours of torturing them, I ripped Roxanne's vocal cords out with my teeth. I grinned at Jeannie and she watched with horrified eyes as I ate them. Roxanne gurgled as he choked to death on her own blood. Don't worry, Jeannie, you'll be joining her soon. I said, but to my surprise, it was Roxanne's voice that came out of my throat. I giggled again and tore Jeannie's throat out too. I ate her vocal cords too and laughed as she too drowned in her own blood. It was at that moment that I heard clapping from the doorway of the room. I spun around raised my skinners, and growled at the figure standing there. He was taller than me, maybe about six foot one tall. He was thin, but even with the blood-stained white hoodie on, I could tell he was fit. His hair was coal black and hung down to his shoulders, but these things were not really what caught my attention. It was his face that intrigued me. It was white, not the normal Caucasian white, but white, white like it had been bleached. His eyes were large and unblinking. I could see that his eyelids had been burnt off. As if that wasn't unusual enough, there was a smile. His lips were all burnt red and he had deep gashes in his cheeks, extending his smile almost to his ears. But the most perplexing thing was that while I knew I should be scared of him and the giant butcher knife in his hand, I wasn't. Who are you, and what do you want? I growled. Name's Jeff. Jeff the Killer. What I wanted, sweet cheeks, was to kill these idiots. Unfortunately, it looks like I got here too late. Well, not too late to watch the show you put on with those girls. I gotta say, I'm impressed with how you handled those skinners. He chuckled. Don't give him your real name, Shayla. Tell him that you are Voicebox. We will share that name from now on. Alright, Voicebox. The name is Voicebox, not Sweet Cheeks, I replied. I wasn't about to let my guard down with Jeff. He is, after all, a killer. Oh, that's very clever. Nice name, Sweet Cheeks. You know, I have some friends that would find you as interesting as I do. You ever heard of the creepy pastas? No, what are the creepy pastas? Well, to humans, we're urban legends and scary stories. But what we really are is practically immortal killers. Most of us live in Slender Mansion with Slender Man. You do realize that you are a new creepypasta, right? Really? So that's what I am? Yep, and that means you can live with us in Slender Mansion. I don't know. Shayla, go with him. I know that everything will be alright. We can trust Slender Man. Are you sure we can trust him? I'm sure. Slender Man may be a killer, but he would never harm us. 
All right. Oh, yes, of course, because Slenderman is known for being talkative. Okay, just let me grab my backpack and we can head out. No problem, sweet cheeks. He grinned bigger as I growled at him. My name is Voicebox. Don't call me sweet cheeks. I sheeted my skinners and left the room. Jeff followed behind me and we left the house. I grabbed my backpack and motioned for Jeff to take the lead. He smirked as he led me deeper into the wood. He soon reached a large cherry tree in a clearing. I was confused as to why Jeff had led me here until he walked up to the tree and shoved a key into a small knot hole in the trunk. There was a slight rumbling sound as a doorway appeared in the trunk of the tree. Jeff motioned for me to follow him as he walked through the doorway. The first thing I saw after I passed through the doorway was a huge mansion. It looked slightly creepy and possibly abandoned. Jeff grabbed my wrist and tugged me towards the mansion. Well, this is Slender Mansion. Don't worry, sweet cheeks. It looks much better on the inside. Jeff, quit calling me sweet cheeks, I said as he opened the door. Hey, Slendy, I'm back and I brought a friend, he yelled. Child, do not... Oh my god, Slenderman doesn't talk! Slenderman doesn't talk. Child, do not call me Slendy, and you know you are not supposed to. I heard the deep voice trail off. I looked away from Jeff and saw an eight or nine foot tall man in a black business suit and no face standing in the foyer. Daughter, you're alive. The man Jeff called Slendy said as he scooped me up in a tight hug. I thought you both sisters and you died with your mother. Huh? Slendy, what do you mean daughter? Since when do you got kids? Jeff looked just as confused as I was. I'm sorry, but I think you might be confused. I just killed my parents yesterday. Shayla, you would not remember since you were very young when your mother died. But did your aunt never tell you? What about your sister Rebecca? Is she still alive too? Who's Shayla? She said her name is Voicebox. Shayla, Slenderman is telling you the truth. He is our father. The people you called your parents were actually our mother's sister and her husband. Benna is our cousin. Our aunt should have told you about our mother years ago, but she never knew who our father was. Now answer our father. Tell him what happened to Rebecca. He deserves to know everything. And I mean everything. He needs to know what our uncle did to us. I'll tell him about Rebecca, but I don't want to tell him everything until we are alone. It is no one else's business. Very well. Father, I did go by voice box now. As for Rebecca, she died. Ten years ago in a car accident. I'm sorry, no one ever told me that I was adopted. That is alright, my dear. I have mourned for your mother and sister for 17 years. I am just happy that I have you back. Come, daughter, let me introduce you to the rest of the household. Then later tonight we shall sit down and get to know each other. Father finally put me down and led me into the living room. There were six guys sitting around playing games, talking or reading. Everyone, I have someone I would like to introduce you to. With that, six pairs of eyes looked over towards me. Everyone, this is my daughter, Voicebox. That concludes Chapter 2. Everything has just gotten so much worse. Tune in next time for Chapter 3.